Well, much has been written and even more said about the supposed watershed elective conference of the ANC that starts at uh, Nazareth for five days, starting on uh, Saturday. But you know, whether there's a premature collapse of the conference, whether it ends in calumny or consensus, I don't think it's much going to change the, the lives of, of the majority of people around the country. The only darker cloud on that horizon, of course, is a possibility of a state of emergency. This is something I first postulated about four years ago as a possibility and upgraded that to a probability 18 months back. Uh, it's still very much on the cards, but it may not happen. However, if it does, all bets are off. It would be foolish to even forecast, to even think about predicting what may happen should something like that occur. It would be a shambles, that's for sure, but how and where and what would happen, who knows. Um, but as I say, it may not happen, and I certainly hope it won't. But what we can predict with relative certainty is that at the end of that conference, um, the exchange rate value of the RAND will either rise or fall a bit, uh, depending on how the money market gamblers win or lose their bets. There's also coming an 18% plus uh, electricity uh, tariff hike, which means that the trajectory towards greater difficulty for the majority of people will simply continue. But you know, it's not all doom and gloom. There are flickers of hope, glimmers of hope. For example, around the country, civic groups tend to be moving, demanding some kind of change away from what we have been dealing with. And the unions, belatedly in many instances, are starting to flex their muscles about the use of their pension money in particular. And this week in Cape Town, very interestingly, 30 representatives from 14 African countries came together. They were communicators in, in the trade union movement, forging links and working on better ways to communicate. I see in that a degree of hope as well, more than just a glimmer. But I also see a glimmer of hope even, for example, in the Steinhoff debacle, the collapse of the share price of the Steinhoff empire. I see that mainly in terms of education, that it could have opened the eyes of many in the public in general, and in the labor movement in particular, about a reality about stock exchanges. This is something that is often ignored. In my view, of course, stock exchanges, which I have mentioned in this col my column, Inside Labor column in the past, are merely gambling dens that are rather better regulated or more tightly regulated than casinos. But that's basically what I think they are. But even with tighter regulations, the gamblers are protected as they often pillage public money. Now, the Steinhoff debacle, I think, hi highlights this view. And therefore, we can gain some hope from it that people will learn. And it certainly has strengthened the union resolve, particularly the public sector unions, where it is said they've lost up to 12 billion rand in government employee pension fund money because of what had happened at, at uh, Steinhoff. Anyway, this is what I intend to look into and to try to clarify to some degree in my Inside Labour column, the final one for this year, which you can access on this platform, Fin24, tomorrow, and as per usual, a version of which will appear in the business section of the city press. This being the last Labour wrap of 2017, I would like to take this opportunity to wish you all the very best for the festive season. And I hope you join me in hoping, in wishing, that we can look forward to a 2018 of less corruption and greater justice.